So, dear colleagues, we are going to start this press conference, this discussion. So, there was an idea to hold this press conference because now anti-corruption court is being created and the Fund of Democratic Initiatives deals with um, surveys concerning these uh, processes. So we decided to publish those results, the attitude to corruption and to other issues. And uh, we gathered the experts who are able to tell us about these things in detail and how the public can influence on this process, that this process be transparent of high quality and uh, to avoid situation like with uh, an ACP because its efficiency is uh, questioned now. So during three years, I'm going to tell you about the data of our survey. And uh, we decided how to name this press release and what is the key idea of this result. We proposed uh, this phrase that those who are corrupt themselves, they won't be able to fight corruption. So this is the main idea provided by the public, and maybe it has some sense. About the key data, first, as of today, the absolute majority of the citizens of Ukraine, they believe that this is the main and serious problem in the country. War in Donbass, this is serious, this is problem. Also, poverty and tariffs uh, is also the problem. But when we are speaking about uh, the main problems uh, of people, uh, so uh, these are the main for people, but the corruption is the priority number one. 60% say that this is the most important problem, and more than 91 say that this is really serious problem. So why these results uh, are so small? So those who were surveyed, they say that uh, uh, the main is that those people who fight corruption, they are corrupt themselves. Uh, and. Uh, 38% uh, say that uh, uh, there is impunity and uh, it results in no positive actions. Many people say that uh, there is no powerful hand that can establish order in society. And uh, it shows that sooner or later it may result in negative things because uh, we have populism, and uh, a leader may appear who will provide some fight with corruption, uh, but it may um, provide not good results for the country. And uh, also people understand that it is difficult to overcome this corruption uh, only by uh, uh, power, so this is 61%. Uh, also people say that uh, people will will be able to uh, reduce corruption and uh, also that uh, uh, we also considered the issue whether corruption is a part of Ukrainian mentality. And here we have interesting figures. 38% believe that this is part of mentality, 46 that uh, it is not. 38 is really a lot. But honestly, disturbing aspects are. So the younger the respondents, the more often they mention that corruption is the part of Ukrainian mentality, and this is a warning sign. It shows that now we have a new generation uh, that uh, lives uh, in discussions around corruption and how to overcome this corruption, but uh, the things remain the same. Why it is so important to speak about anti-corruption court now? Because this is the main link that uh, should establish justice in every case. And uh, maybe this is it. Uh, so uh, Irina Bikeshkina will tell us more about it. And now I give the floor to our experts. First of all, I would like to give the floor to Mikola Havrenyuk. Um, of the Center of uh, Policy and Legal Reforms, Doctor of Law. Thank you. Good morning, dear friends. First, 
I would like to say that we have distorted view on what corruption is and how to fight it. We are hostages of these distorted views and populists, those who go to elections, they use this situation. And speaking scientifically, corruption consists of a variety of criminal violations connected with the seizure of state property and communal property and also with the abuse of office and bribery. And bribery is not the main component of corruption, not in the scope, nor in the harm that is made by corruption. First place is taken by embezzlement of state money and uh, also the use of uh, the abuse of office. When we are speaking about fight with corruption, people erroneously believe that this fight will be successful if we send more corrupt people to jail, when we detain, arrest these people. But I would like to say that uh, each corrupt official, this is one leaf on the tree of corruption. So we may cut these leaves, but the roots remain. That's why we should go deeper and uh, we should believe those politicians who will say about preventive measures that they will use. And uh, these measures, they should be implemented to provide changes in econ economy and social sphere. And uh, everything that happens in cr uh, criminal area, this is at the last place if we are speaking about corruption prevention. So when we speak about uh, criminal measures, uh, uh, if we give too much attention to this, we do not understand properly the roots of corruption and how it all works. So now about the topic of our discussion, about the exam for charges and creation of anti-corruption court. I would like to draw the attention to the fact that according to the law and judiciary and the status of charges in Ukraine, there are three criteria of uh, qualification assessment of charges and candidates uh, to the position of charges, uh, including two anti -corruption, uh, high anti-corruption court. The first criteria is competence, the next is ethics, and the third is uh, um, uh, integrity. And in order to verify correspondence of candidates to these three criteria, uh, high uh, Qualification Commission was established and uh, uh, Public Council of International Experts should provide uh, help to it. And now we face the situation. We do not know how this Public Council of International Experts will work because uh, uh, we had the Public Council of Experts. Uh, domestic uh, one, and uh, uh, but they do not uh, participate in uh, the selection for high court. Uh, so uh, we should have proper algorithm of actions uh, uh, for this institution uh, because uh, there are no such provisions for PCIE and uh, we do not know how they will find out about the source of income and the correspondence of level of life and uh, um, the knowledge and practical experience in order to provide uh, justice in uh, these uh, criminal cases. And uh, here we should insist that uh, the PCIE, they should uh, respond to the addresses of the public and the media and to provide uh, proper, uh, in order that information be provided uh, accordingly. So the only opportunity is to 
hold monitoring, independent monitoring of candidates and information about these candidates. It should be provided to the Public Council of International Experts. We do not have other options. Also, we should take into account that among six members of uh, Public Council of International Experts, there can be three that will come up with the initiative to verify a candidate. And here I call on and hope that all the members of the Council will support the initiative of their colleagues in cases when there is some suspicion that some candidate do not, uh, does not correspond to requirements. Next, the judges of high anti-corruption court, they may face great future if they provide properly and contribute, but also uh, they uh, may be criticized heavily. And uh, this um, uh, selection should be of quality. It will be really difficult to work. And uh, in connection with this, I would like to remind that uh, only 27 judges will be selected for first instance and the 12 to a appellate chamber. And uh, with this, these judges will experience a very heavy load. Uh, six, 166 uh, uh, cases uh, were sent, and uh, NABU, in which 212 uh, detectives work, uh, uh, they will provide these cases to the high anti-corruption court, and I believe that uh, these cases will be not less than 100. And uh, uh, here we have a huge problem concerning the uh, investigative judges of uh, High Anti-Corruption Court because they, independent of where, not only in Kiev but throughout Ukraine, they sh should deal with issues uh, concerning different proceedings, hundreds of proceedings. Now NABU has uh, 730 proceedings, and in each case, uh, the investigative charges should deal with the material evidence and the use of different uh, um, proceedings, such as uh, uh, recuse uh, from office, temporary recuse uh, of uh, judges, uh, temporary access to things and documents, temporary seizure, uh, arrest of property, and so on and so forth. So they should deal with the issues concerning preventive measures, not only uh, with the, concerning their implementation, but also uh, their uh, continuation. Uh, uh, for, for example, 160 days also, these charges provide permits for the um, investigative actions, uh, and uh, there may be uh, tons of such uh, actions. And I believe that in order that the investigative charges of anti -corruption, uh, high anti-corruption court be efficient uh, um, concerning such a big number of proceedings, um, and uh, uh, also uh, taking into account such a big number of uh, uh, detectives. So we need 10 or 15 investigative charges. And we have overall number 27, and uh, um, we understand that all uh, charges of high anti-corruption court, they should uh, consider those cases uh, um, each case should be considered by three judges, uh, and they should have experience not less than five years. So uh, taking into account uh, holidays, uh, sick leaves, uh, and uh, uh, compensation for uh, the work during uh, weekends, uh, so it w they will be able to create only several panels of three. So. Uh, they can 
only deal with 10 or 20 criminal proceedings. So that's why I believe that this load, this burden of uh, high anti-corruption court charges, this workload will be huge. We should do something with it. Because we understand that as of today, the situation is not resolved. And uh, we believe that we should somehow improve the legislation and maybe uh, not to have these uh, case uh, uh, that not three judges should, cons should consider the case, but maybe two judges or one judge. And uh, we should help anti-corruption court in order that it be able to deal with this huge workload. At the same time, going back to the issue of selection to this court, I would like to say that uh, each of the candidates should be a really qualified person. Here, unfortunately, we cannot guarantee this based on how the selection is done. We know that each candidate may have up to 1,000 scores, and we know that the candidate may have only 90 scores, and uh, uh, in practical uh, task, uh, so this is uh, the preparation of the case based on the material provided uh, concerning criminal crime. Uh, this is 120, so uh, 200. Uh, uh, 10, so the rest, uh, 790 scores are for something else. If we are speaking scientifically, we do not know. We do not know the methodology of um, the assessment of the scores, why uh, so uh, uh, they are so small, uh, the competence is only 210, so for ethics and uh, impartiality, we have about 800 scores, so this is a big number. And we should have really clear criteria in order to establish, establish this ethics and impartiality of the judges in order to be convinced in this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mikola. So you started that uh, only by punishment you, we may not be able to eradicate corruption. When we ask people, we see that the main focus is made on punishment. So many reasons may underlie, but it is evident that people, they want justice in some, uh, they, they need the overall justice. Uh, uh, the supremacy of justice here and now uh, to punish some perpetrators. So now I give the floor to uh, Mikhailo. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I'm really glad to be here at UCMC. And uh, I would like to support the words said by Mikola. I agree with a lot of things. Punishment is not the only thing that allows us to fight corruption. There is also prevention, the rules, and the support of those rules. So this is a reversibility of punishment. And in Moldova, during one of the discussions, we raised the issue. And a simple example was provided why people who work abroad, who live there, when they return to my Moldova, they uh, throw the uh, cigarettes right uh, on the floor. 
so, and uh, why do you do this in your country, not in the country where you work? And they said about the fines in those countries. And if you uh, throw your uh, fag at, uh, uh, on the floor in these countries, so you will be punished by a fine. So there should be proper rules uh, uh, that reduce uh, the area for corruption and establish clearly clear and understandable rules for everyone and also there is a system of uh, bodies that support this uh, rule of law and uh, anti corruption court this is about the creation of such a system to uh, provide this link the final link we have NABU, there is an investigative body and there is special anti-corruption prosecutor's office. This is the body of uh, uh, supervision and the support of cases in court, but we do not have the court that would be efficient in investigation and uh, there should be a new body. It should not represent the old system. About uh, one percent uh, uh, the fund of Democratic Initiative uh, published this uh, uh, information that only 1% of people believe that the uh, um, judiciary system reform was successful. So we know about the number of unfair judges uh, who underwent uh, uh, the process with the same commission who is responsible for the selection of judges of high anti-corruption court. If you do not want to repeat this, uh, really a bad selection for Supreme Court, we should change something. Good news is that we have the Council of International Experts, Public Council of International Experts, that is similar uh, with its functions uh, to the uh, Public Council of uh, Integrity uh, that was before, but it has a right of veto and uh, it uh, may not allow the uh, bad candidates to um, get positions, but uh, they uh, cannot influence final results, and this is the problem uh, because uh, they have only additional role, and uh, everything will be in the hands of High Qualification Commission of Charges and uh, one third of which are the uh, old judges, um, and they decide who will be new judges. And uh, also, uh, uh, Democratic Initiative Foundation uh, also surveyed people about uh, uh, who should cleanse the system, 47% to, to, they believe, to judges, and uh, 32 international experts, if we are speaking, uh, uh, 42 two and 41 believe to international experts and less than 10 percent uh, believe judges from uh, judicial system. So society uh, trust uh, uh, much more uh, to uh, the institutions of civil society and to international experts and we should provide more responsibilities uh, to um, public uh, council of international experts and uh, to civil society organizations in order to establish proper um, court. Uh, so about the problems, um, if the rules won't be changed, um, and uh, I would like to remind that uh, uh, we uh, cannot accept any uh, unfair judges uh, to um, HACC. So, um, so for me, uh, I believe that uh, um, uh, judges should be um, selected according to constitution, uh, to constitution, and constitution says that uh, if uh, the judge uh, may not uh, provide information about uh, the source of his income, he. Uh, is not able to uh, hold the position of the judge. Uh, so um, uh, there are some uh, covert uh, investigative actions uh, when uh, you should uh, have some searches or to find some sources of information, and this information may get to unfair judge, and he may sell this information 
and that the investigation will be ruined and people uh, won't uh, won't uh, and uh, people uh, won't be brought to responsibility of those who are guilty in crimes also this collegial consideration of cases if unfair charges are on the panel so uh, the cases won't be uh, considered in a proper way and this is a huge problem and uh, uh, this scenario should not repeat for high anti-corruption court and 21 uh, percent uh, is for the exam so our discussion is called uh, um, the ju uh, judge for the exam so uh, today they uh, have this exam and later on they will have interviews so this part of exams so this part is objective we may see what they uh, wrote and uh, this is only 21 percent of overall number of scores and uh, more than 70 percent is the black box how these scores are provided so these are the members of high qualification commission of judges and uh, people do not trust them much and the uh, public council of international experts do not participate in this so uh, this order should be changed in order that more scores were provided for the objective part uh, so pcie uh, i believe that they uh, are limited in uh, information about uh, judges dossier so uh, they uh, so uh, the explanation will be needed why this uh, council blocks the um, access of some judges but they have only 30 days in order to analyze uh, hundreds of candidates and uh, all information is in Ukrainian. The access to this information is difficult for the council members, and uh, it is difficult uh, to provide them this information. This is the logistics problem, it is technical problem, but it also may provide uh, um, difference in this process. Also, the criteria according to which the scores are provided concerning integrity and competence. Uh, PCIE assesses competence and integrity, and uh, based on this, they may end the participation of candidates in the process. In order to do this, they sh we should understand the criteria, what is impartiality, what is not, uh, in, and uh, uh, what um, are the uh, we do not have uh, proper rules, we do, we do not have proper criteria what is uh, impartiality and what is not, what is integrity. Uh, so uh, and uh, um, Public Integrity Council uh, stopped its work because of the actions of High uh, Qualification Commission of Judges, and we insisted that there should be proper common rules for the assessment of integrity, and we worked out uh, the 20 criteria, but, but we didn't find common ground, and uh, um, journalists and uh, uh, international uh, Council of Experts uh, um, also do not have proper criteria about the uh, integrity of churches and uh, uh, also um, PCIE does not have access to practical tasks that were uh, tests and practical tasks uh, completed by the candidates. Uh, to the high anti-corruption court. They cannot assess the competence of these candidates, but the law envisages that uh, they assess uh, this and uh, that. And now uh, high qualification commission of judges uh, should decide whether they will uh, provide this access. Also about transparency, I believe that this word is used too much. 
and the assessment to, to, uh, of uh, selection to the Supreme Court. Uh, so uh, some people say that uh, this was uh, transparent, but uh, pub, uh, uh, pub, uh, public activists said that uh, there is uh, no proper transparency. You uh, might look. Uh, uh, f through the U uh, YouTube channel. So, f um, for example, a uh, person is asked, uh, 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 what is the origin of your Range Rover? And they say that, for example, they traveled and picked some strawberries and earned uh, for this Range Rover by doing this, or uh, some uh, this is some inheritance from their grandmother. So some charges become uh, the... Uh, so in order not to repeat the situation, and uh, s uh, some uh, judges uh, who really participated in anti-corruption act actions, uh, they were not allowed to uh, pass during, and they are not in the final list. And uh, those uh, who got uh, less scores they became winners. In order not to repeat the situation, we should increase transparency not only of the process but also of the result to show what the, are the scores and who uh, put these scores, who provided them. So this should be done because there is great mistrust to judiciary and judges, unfortunately, that we see now, and sociological surveys show this. In order to uh, show this, uh, uh, we should do uh, this action and uh, uh, transparent process should provide transparent results. So uh, you may watch it on YouTube. We are ready to provide unnecessary information. Uh, if we change all this, we uh, will ha have a chance. Nothing is guaranteed, but we will have a chance to see uh, good judges and high anti-corruption court. If it won't be made, this will be one more attempt. And uh, NGOs um, provided information about this recently. This will be a new attempt to, to fake this contest. And uh, these judges will be once again, the, uh, once again, these judges will be controlled by top officials. and. Uh, we should uh, really fight with corruption, not just fake it. Thank you. Now I give the floor to Victor Taran, and uh, uh, he is head of the, uh, the Center for Political Studies and Analysis. Good afternoon. I was asked to analyze some uh, political issues concerning the reform and uh, how this may influence on uh, election campaign, uh, presidential and uh, uh, parliamentary ones. And these issues will be raised uh, further on. So if we are speaking about classic political campaigns in Europe, candidates start to debate around principles and ideologies. And, uh, what instruments they will be used to promote their ideology in uh, social and economic spheres. All debates and political uh, programs are around these issues, taxes, social protection issues. In Ukraine, the situation is quite different. We do not have ideological parties, and all political technologies work as marketologists, and uh, they try to assess uh, what uh, disturbs people uh, through uh, by phone or through other sources and based on uh, the opinion people, they form Uh, uh, the, uh, so uh, they uh, create mottos with which uh, and slogans with which they uh, address the society. So these are the issues of war and peace, and uh, the tariffs and corruption issues. And uh, three components are taken in the electoral campaign. If you look at sociological survey that you've provided. Uh, it shows 
clearly that first there are sympathies, uh, whether people like or dislike the candidate, then the issue of peace, economy, and the issue of corruption. And it is clear that these three topics will be dominant in the rhetoric of all the candidates, but it will change, and we fear that it will be without proper sense. Opposition candidates will say that when they come to power, they will punish corrupt officials. They agree with colleagues that society do not want justice, they want hard punishments. And uh, we clearly understand why. Because during years of independence, uh, maybe we can count uh, the cases of those who were brought to judge judges on the fingers of uh, the hand. So society will demand this punishment, and um, uh, people uh, who are in power, and uh, we, they we are speaking about parliamentary uh, and uh, presidential elections. So they said that we adopted some laws, we created everything you wanted. Uh, we are speaking not about quality, but about the uh, uh, form. So uh, we implemented that you wanted. So uh, we will be put in a paradigm that will be without sense. We will fight in conditions of memes and uh, myths, and they will show us some um, images. Uh, uh, so we will fight corruption, just wait, they will say. So how to uh, break through this institutional trap? Together with our colleagues uh, in public sector, uh, we discussed this issue, and we believe that the most efficient will be not to hear what the candidates plan to do in the future, because they always promise to do something in the future. But we should put clear requirements, and uh, we should um, raise the, uh, and uh, also we've discussed with the experts such a, with experts such a topic that society assesses the law, the laws that were adopted really low, and we spoke with it, uh, uh, about it with our colleagues. But we created the legislative basis, and it is not bad. And uh, we should demand from the deputies and the president, they should not ruin this anti-corruption uh, legislation, and this, sh and they should promote it, and this should be a requirement to the candidates, and uh, uh, maybe there should be some reforms, uh, uh, some reinforcement, but uh, this uh, because uh, uh, this basis was just created, it should be reinforced, not ruined. And also about the gaps in implementation, how they will correct uh, the situation. The key challenge is, imp is implementation. When we are speaking about anti-corruption uh, court, once again, there is an issue of organization of salaries uh, and procedural things that should be provided by power because anti-corruption court will be created, but there will be no money for its functioning and uh, no proper salaries uh, are planned in the budget. So the salaries uh, that should be provided, uh, otherwise there can be pressure on charges, and we should demand uh, proper implementation. If they say that they will put uh, all corrupt people behind bars, we may say about the criteria, because we may face the situation that may be some political 
persecutions or part of corrupt officials will say that this is political persecution. So this should be done before the campaign with whom they are going to fight and persecute, uh, maybe name them. It is not so difficult to do this. So there should be openness and transparency. This issue remains. And also to remove those uh, empty words uh, in uh, electoral campaigns. So I looked through the agenda of the candidates and uh, the candidates for the presidency and uh, to parliament. They just provide empty words. And if you look through all the programs of the candidates, there will be empty words that we will come and overcome and so on. So they should provide proper information what they plan to do based on opportunities provided by new anti-corruption infrastructure that was created at the legislative level. If we are speaking about voters, we may say that the issue of corruption is really of concern for them. So many issues are for discussion. We are speaking about one more challenge that will be used as a factor during an election. This is uh, the dossiers against one another. They will speak about past corruption and about active corruption, but whether it will be decisive fa factor, we do not know, because uh, there was a lot of corruption in the past, so uh, this information is not really interesting for the people. People are interested in the future, and the candidate who will be able to articulate and to provide proper information that he will be able to uh, put these corrupt individuals to jail, this individual will have more support. So this will work. Everything else won't be. So we should be ready for the new wave. Uh, so we should uh, create clear requirements, clear framework. And uh, civil society and uh, uh, the media, they should do everything else in order to um, support new uh, um, a new uh, system. Uh, so I see empty places here. I understand that maybe people watch us online or will, uh, they will watch us later. But uh, if we spoke about the ratings, uh, about half percent of ratings, maybe I believe that here we would have uh, a huge crowd. I believe that people, journalists, they do not understand uh, the importance of the problem. And on the 20th, we will hold a press conference here or in other place about fifth anniversary of Maidan. And uh, I saw our survey so about uh, what was important for the participants of uh, uh, my, um, Maidan. And uh, uh, one of the main was the punishment of those people who uh, uh, were corrupt. Uh, many of such people fled and uh, many came to their place. So people got disillusioned and uh, uh, through our research we see that this disillusion is really great. And it is connected uh, with the fact that corrupt officials uh, um, go without punishment. And when people see in mass media on TV, people see arrests, they see those accusations, and later on, it turns out that nothing happens, no results, and they got disillusioned in uh, judiciary, in power, and in justice on the whole. For example, in Vaskirisenka, uh, in the market, uh, sellers know me, and after Revolution of Dignity, they asked me, who was jailed, they asked, and in two years they said, so what, they said, who was jailed? Now they just do not ask me about this. And they say, and I ask them, why 
don't you ask me, and they say, oh, we understand that no one will be jailed. So it is important uh, that uh, uh, for people it is really important that those who are guilty are jailed, and uh, who will jail these people? This judicial system, it didn't change much. It was formed uh, uh, during many years. So some won't jail be uh, and, uh, uh, because some people just uh, buy themselves out. And others are just afraid to jail those who are guilty. And uh, others, they just do not want to to have bad uh, to have bad attitude from those people, uh, not just for money, but for different things. So there are criminal uh, court proceedings against Diamond Prosecutor for four and a half years. This process was ongoing, and it continues now in Kharkiv. Uh, this girl, so. Everyone understands the situation, this uh, Zaitseva case, and uh, people watch these cases and people get disillusioned, not just in the courts, but in judiciary and the whole. And people believe if these people are allowed to do this, maybe I also can do something, because maybe it is allowed. And uh, we see that. Uh, uh, people believe that uh, corruption is a part of our Ukrainian mentality. And we put this issue uh, uh, before, and now this uh, idea only reinforced. And this new anti-corruption court, in this anti-corruption court, there should be warriors who fight corruption in a legal way. Of course, All procedures were pu uh, should be put in place. For them, this should be the aim of their life. For example, no one can force me to change the results, uh, even for half of percent, because this is my life. Uh, and uh, such people should be in the anti-corruption court. And what we see, mildly speaking, I would like to say that this is really fearful. And uh, this is time to put question to journalists. And we understand that uh, this is really important for people. And I would like to say that we will fight. We will find a fight uh, um, to the end. But how are you going to fight? fight? And uh, you may ask uh, judges that 70% of scores goes for the known criteria uh, based on the opinion of judges, uh, and people do not trust those judges. So I won't uh, elect for those can uh, I won't vote for those candidates who say that this is right. And uh, what is the attitude of deputies to the fact that some? Uh, judges uh, uh, to whom uh, the Public uh, Integrity Council provided mistrust, uh, whether they have positive or negative attitude towards those judges. So I won't vote for the party to which these candidates belong. So a uh, devil is in the detail, uh, because uh, um, overall everyone are for. So, uh, these, uh, uh, in this case of diamond prosecutors, they say yes, the judges are independent. Uh, so, uh, first we were speaking with international experts, and they said that uh, first uh, uh, independence of judges is important. And I brought them to our economic court, and uh, we had the trial there with Karolevska, and I um, showed them the car park. And uh, you've said that no one should interfere in their independence. And they said, mm, no, our judges do not have uh, those cars. So we should understand uh, that uh, 
uh, judiciary ref uh, reform is the main reform in the society and the creation of anti-corruption court that would be really anti-corruption court. And uh, the corrupt people should not uh, go unpunished because these issues are really important for society. Thank you. Before questions, I would like to say, in the context of mentality of Ukrainian people, I do not believe that corruption is uh, prevailing in mentality of Ukrainians. I believe uh, this is a mentality of the generation that are from the Soviet Union and remember those corrupt actions and uh, uh, it is also prevailing uh, in uh, politics. We should look more positive in our anti-corruption future. Uh, 20 years ago, among our members, uh, um, uh, Georgia was considered corrupt, and uh, there was a lot of bribery. 100 years ago, ago, the most corrupt state was Sweden. So everything changes. We should just, we should just act and everything will be okay. About the generation, I do not agree with you. Whether you believe that corruption is the expression of Ukrainian mentality, 18, uh, uh, so I believe that uh, um, this information, uh, um, so, so I believe that this is, um, uh, this figure is provided in our research. So um, what can be changed in society? So using the experience of 1990s, uh, uh, so some purification facilities uh, appeared uh, on the plant because uh, um, some uh, grandson of the official, uh, he should be provided with some information about it. And uh, uh, on Facebook where, where some Post, uh, posts uh, how people um, drive their um, expensive cars and where do they get this money from. So we understand that uh, it is difficult to change those charges, but maybe these charges uh, should feel uncomfortable. Uh, this attitude of uh, proper attitude of society should be to those individuals who are corrupt. So uh, I won't provide a silver bullet to resolve all the issues, but Andrei, in his uh, question, he put several answers. So first is education. So education in schools. Uh, about uh, corruption, whether it is good or bad, this is really important because when we provide uh, knowledge, information, and understanding what is uh, um, good and what is not, uh, we should speak about the essence during elections, not about golden mo mountains. The next is practice. So uh, we should not only tell about it in schools, we should always do it on pract in practice. So people should be fined uh, if they uh, drive without rules. Uh, and uh, this will work good in combination. And there should be a reversibility of punishment. And there should be proper investigation and uh, proper proceedings and proper courts that are not corrupt. It is really easy to say this, but it should be done. We should change the judges. And what Andrei uh, has mentioned in his question, for judges, there are also services uh, that send you uh, on low cost to Poland or somewhere else, and then you go to Maldives or 
uh, somewhere else. Why? Because Nabu has, has access to uh, border crossing and uh, uh, we continue create an infrastructure and we create independent bodies like NABU that uh, makes corruption more costly. Uh, thank you, Victor. And uh, sooner or later it uh, just loses its sense. Uh, so each part of work is really important in education and prevention of corruption and punishment of corruption is important, sociological surveys and elections. This is uh, part of one system and I believe that uh, sooner or later it will bring us where we want to be. I would like to support, uh, support uh, Mikhailo. We should have a complex of measures, and among them, uh, we should remember about uh, declarations of uh, property and assets and proper monitoring. Uh, let's remember about uh, the situation when this uh, system was non existent, and now we have uh, 2 million declarations. And these declarations are submitted yearly, and uh, if people if people get more than one hundred and eighty eight thousand uh, or open um, accounts in non resident banks, and they sh and uh, these declarations should be transparent and provided to society, so. Uh, People are trying to avoid uh, this, and uh, they are afraid of hiding their property because people see the situation. So uh, there should be proper order of this monitoring, and uh, this is being done by civil society. And all these measures and complex, they will create a field for change. So it is evident that here we have three components. First one, so this is an irreversibility of punishment. People should see that people are punished for some actions, and people do not see this now. <coughs> Second, uh, the most important is to create conditions where it would be difficult to get bribes. For example, simple things. Uh, a long time ago, when a child entered a uh, higher education institution, they, if they wanted to enter, they tried to find a person they know who worked in this institution. And uh, my colleague, when his daughter entered the university, the dean said that I, I do not take this, I won't take this money, but I should provide this money to, uh, to the top. Today they are speaking about good teachers for their children. Yes, this requires money, but they do not think about bribes because we have independent external assessment. It went to another level. They have exams and um, uh, we all have this, and uh, also uh, people and uh, post-credit studies, and we have less corruption there. And the leading uh, high educational institutions, they compete for their students because uh, they uh, want to have more students. And the external assessment changed the situation dramatically concerning corruption. And also, for example, uh, documents should be signed, and uh, the signature is in delay, and there should be proper deadline for signature, and uh, um, this should be also provided because uh, people often pay for things that should be done without any payment, uh, or just to provide money not to have problems. Uh, so this is about education. People should be provided with this information that it uh, spoils the life of society, the whole life. So it is evident that we should start at schools. But if uh, 
Some people pay for marks at schools. If children see that people bring something to the uh, uh, teachers, so we should understand and people should understand that corruption is a great evil that ruins a society they live in. Thank you, dear colleagues. If you do not have other questions, and I see that, that there are no questions, we will be thankful for interesting information. Till the next time, goodbye.